Hi everybody and welcome to Professional Beauty and Hairdressers Journal Ireland's webinar for this week and this week we're joined by Niall Rafferty who is the Global Assessment Lead and Commercial Manager Ireland with iTech BTCT and of course iTech BCT, BTCT provides the leading international qualifications specialising in beauty <coughs> and spa therapy, hairdressing and complementary therapies. So Niall, thank you so much for joining us and welcome. You're very welcome, Corinna. Thank you. And uh, yeah, so what we're going to talk about today, which of course is very topical, is uh, health and safety and the post-COVID <coughs> work environment. Now I know we're probably, you know, you can't quite say post-COVID, but it's the best, it's the best wording that we can come up with for now. So um, yeah, we'll just go straight into the, the, the questions. Um, I wanted to ask you about, uh, you recently released Six new infection prevention prevention. <clears throat> so, um, can you talk me through these? Sure, Karina, um, and thank you, everybody. So, firstly, yeah, iTech and VTCT, they've drawn upon a large variety of reference materials from the likes of WHO, national health authorities globally, as well as the industry experts here in Ireland. Um, so, they've drawn experiences, we'd say, with the COVID uh, prevention infection tracing. Uh, as ITEC and VTCT, they take the responsibility to the sector very, very seriously and they look to empower centres and learners uh, and as well as industry with confidence as safety remains a priority for all. So effectively, there will be six new qualifications um, and these will be all level two regulated qualifications from ITEC or VTCT. Um, the particular qualifications, there will be a prerequisite for fuller type qualifications going forward. But the type of qualifications that will be embedded uh, will be the type of the level two award in infection prevention in COVID-19, um, in hairdressers and barbers, for beauty therapy as well as nail services, complementary as well as sport therapy, makeup services as well as the sports and fitness sector. So there's six particular areas or six particular qualifications that will have an embedded uh, particular unit within. So they'll be uh, coming live uh, from the 1st of August. They'll be regulated within colleges here in Ireland as well as internationally. Okay. And then, um, <clears throat> you know, going forward, like I, I know that I talked to you about this separately, like COVID-19, how much is it going to be, you know, feature in your qualifications from now on in? Yeah, so these particular new qualifications as in the level two award, they'll be specific to COVID-19, the prevention uh, and understanding. Uh, so everything was about new learning. So these new qualifications is about the learning of COVID, even though uh, we all know within the hair and beauty sectors, as even as well as the sports and fitness sectors, that the whole hygiene, sterilization, sanitization was always there as part and embedded within the qualification as units. So this new qualification would be specific to COVID-19. Um, so it'll be embedding new learning within the existing qualifications, if you want to call it. Okay, and, and you think um, from now on, I suppose, um, all your qualifications will will feature after we kind of get over this initial new learning period yeah. that like going forward say even like if you think about next year um COVID is just going to become the norm as part of learning will it absolutely so this these new qualifications per se they will be developed or they have been developed uh, and they'll be rolled out come first of august so they'll be embedded within the new academic year within etbs here in ireland as in september um but also in private industry as well these particular qualifications will also be open for, for those people who are not registered as a particular learner. So people within salons, within hairdressers, they too also can become, um, you know, that understanding within these level two qualifications uh, and more information as in through the iTech websites or through other uh, industry experts, just Havoc will have also information on these particular qualifications going forward. Okay. And then just, do you think, um, you know, as we move forward into, you know, um, the new phase of living, working, everything, do you think that the learner experience is going to change? So say somebody who, yeah. you know, say two years ago decided that they were going to enter this industry um, a certain way or whatever, is that going to be different now because of what's happened with 
with everything that's happened really yeah and good question Karina um yes is the answer um I think the world has changed uh, in terms of how it's to deal with you know such pandemics and such issues as in health issues like like we have at the moment so in terms of learners like learners have also have already been changed since March of this year since the lockdown and since the, the, the COVID pandemic hit Ireland. So since March, to be fair, a lot of learners would have experienced slightly different ways of learning, albeit through remote learning, blended learning. But I think as we look forward uh, into the new academic year, albeit in August and September when colleges uh, are starting back and back open again, you will find that the learning experience will change a little bit in terms of there may be less, less practical interactions um, there will be more infection control issues going forward. There will be social distancing, albeit whether it's a one meter, 0.5 a meter, or two meters remaining, it will slightly change. Uh, in terms of mannequins, the use of mannequins, I, see, I think we've seen uh, being used uh, already in schools and colleges in terms of finishing the practical side of things, but also in variables such as you know, pre-assessments or assessing clients, um, such as par cues, and infection control tracing. I think you'll see that being a feature, even though sanitization and hygiene sterilization was always part and featured within beauty and hair. I, still, I think we will see further and better restrictions in place uh, that will both give confidence to the public as well as to the learners themselves. So I think, yeah, the, the way we treat our clients will slightly change. But Karina, also I do think that it will pay I thought a lot more uh, understanding as an individual, both on their learning and how to live alongside with COVID. So it's a matter of looking at each individual's immune system. So that really comes down to their own uh, specific advice in terms of, you know, getting regular exercise, keeping their immune system strong by increasing their vitamin C and vitamin D. Um, you know, so it's taking, you know, specific control of their own environments as well as their own bodies as well. Um, that will also part and, and feature within. Yeah, actually, I never, um, I kind of half thought about it, I suppose, that, yeah, we all have a, a responsibility now to, um, his COVID is, is with us. So it's like uh, minding yourself and staying as healthy as possible so that you Absolutely. don't, you know, uh, and, you know, and, and the other responsibility as well, I suppose, that we all have uh, the, the personal behaviour. Absolutely. You know, the way like, you know, if you're told, you know, because obviously we can't all be controlled by the government. We, you know, yeah. we have to do it ourselves, yeah. Um, and then what's the best way uh, to reach all sectors within the industry with the aim of keeping the public safe and helping to prevent any possible spread? Well, I think the only way is through effective communication. Now, we've seen effective communication, to be fair, here in this country through the National Health uh, you know, cr pandemic crisis team. In fairness, it was a very unified voice mm -hmm. from the start and the get-go. But I think in terms of, while people might say it was very generic, it wasn't industry specific. But I think then if we look at industry leaders and industry leaders, we think of the, you know, organizations such as Habic. We think of, you know, industries such as uh, the IMTA, the, you know, the Irish Massage, you know, training associations who effectively will be putting uh, guidelines and helping particular businesses um, to cope with, well, initially how to reopen, but also then how to remain open and then also put prevention controls in place and educate and empower particular staff members, our new learners as such, uh, that will effectively will give confidence to the public as a whole. So I think it's, yeah, it's, a, it's effective communication. It's looking to leading lights within industry, such as the IMTA and HABIC. Um, and HABIC being more specific because it's very holistic and all empowering to the hair and beauty sector. Um, so I think, yeah, communication and effective communication through them will, will certainly help. Yeah, because I know I spoke to, I can't remember who it was now, but it was, I think it was somebody else that did a webinar around the whole idea that like the government can, can give um, the rules and the guidelines or whatever, Absolutely. but it's up, to, it's up to the various, like the, the hair and beauty industry had to basically take whatever from the government Absolutely. and then come up with its own guidelines. But like, do you think that that's been done effectively now across the board as in like, are, you know, obviously each business is individual and, you know, everybody's is 
running their own business the best way that they can. But do you think that there has been quite a sort of uniform response across the whole hair and beauty industry that everybody in the industry is pretty much doing the same thing as in around, you know, face masks and, um, you know, all of that stuff that's involved within the salon? Yeah, well, I think it is important for each an individual owner, whether they're small, large or medium sized business. I think they have a responsibility to adapt um, and adopt a lot of the government guidelines, which is the social distancing, uh, which is the prevention in terms of wearing the face mask or shields. I think that was the generic. And I think a lot of businesses have done that. But then when they looked at specific um, you know, industry, we'll say, uh, guidelines, they looked at, they looked for advice from the likes of the IMTA or HAPIC, which is, well, how do I give this particular uh, bespoke, if you want, uh, qualification in terms of, or not qualification, uh, a bespoke, we'll say, service to the client. So they, they look for specific advice uh, from representatives or industry representatives, such as HAPIC and IMTA, uh, about, well, how do I keep myself uh, a, open as a business, but B, then to give confidence to this consumer. Um, I think that's the missing link. And I think the, the likes of the organizations have done a really good job in doing that, in giving the confidence, but also in terms of lobbying the government to be a voice. I think a lot of what these organizations have done collectively and have done very well uh, in terms of opening a little bit early because effectively these were essential services for a lot of people and not just for the service they get, getting their hair done or their nails done or a massage that they get. It's looking at the social, it's looking at the mental, and it's looking at the other aspects um, to these services that I think a lot of industries take for granted. Um, so yeah, effective communication has worked in my opinion. Okay. And uh, you just touched on, on uh, my next question there around, you know, I think it's very, very clear to everybody that the pandemic has shown how important the hair and beauty industry is to the Irish it's like it's it's across the board it's like it's really important to the Irish people and it, like for from like an aesthetic point of view a vanity point of view you know um and, and then it's really important like as you said for like the social aspect I mean I, I know I was talking to somebody the other day who was waiting for a hair appointment and she was making the the, the point that like she what she missed most was obviously she missed her lovely hairdo but she also missed that social thing it was the little treat that she gave herself absolutely every you know four weeks or whatever so like we saw how important it was and then you know we saw also how important it is to the economy because there are so many you know businesses around the country so do you think um following on from the pandemic that this will continue to be the case and do you think that, that more people like have almost had their heads turned by by the response the, the country response i mean it was so massive the way the whole country wanted the hair and beauty sector to reopen they were like jumping up and down going you know let them open let them open so do you think that's going to attract more people coming to come into the industry and then within the industry itself do you think that the people in it will be looking for more upskilling because they've now seen that what they're doing is such an important job and such an important part of Irish society and the Irish economy. Absolutely, Karina. So I think, well, on two aspects, both from an economic perspective, uh, there's a report due to be published by Havoc in the coming weeks that will indicate that the hair and beauty, um, you know, is worth approximately 1.53 billion to the domestic GDP here in Ireland, which is significant. And that's stripping out retail as well as the educational factors that go alongside with educate or with, the, with the, the hair and beauty sector. So that in itself is a significant contributor to the Irish economy. I think then, yes, you're correct in what you're saying. Um, in the past three months or so, I think that both the hair and beauty industry have taken itself very, very seriously in terms of lobbying the government but also giving people hope and objective to come back into their hairdressers, uh, both, as we said before, for that social, that mental, but also as a driver within the economic uh, derivative. Because if you look at each local authority that are waiting for rates and rents in certain aspects, but, and, and what that leads to, to an economy, I think it's bigger than all of that. 
I think another notable factor that the Irish economy, as in uh, per head of capita, we spend more on our hair and beauty services than the UK. So that in itself is significant. So there's a lot of kind of uh, economic benefits, we'll say, uh, as well as the social aspects. Um, but I think as a whole, we have taken this industry very seriously and we have heard very serious and professional people come out during this pandemic within the hair and beauty sector. So I think it's done itself very, very proud. But I think going forward, it needs to, it needs to do better in terms of um, having one collective voice for the hair and beauty sector, rather than having disparate uh, and mixed messages going about. So I think then the, within the hair and beauty sector, you know, I'm happy to be a member of you know, the HAPIC organization, which is again a non-for-profit organization that collectively uh, is a representative body of both the hair and, hair and beauty sector, including barbering here in Ireland. Yeah, because um, I was just as they announced that the, you know, the salons were reopening on the 29th, I was talking to uh, Margaret from Havoc yeah. and uh, she made that point that, you know, going forward now, the industry really needs to um, almost use that, 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 that recognition that it got during Absolutely. the pandemic and build on that now going forward because it was like, it was a real moment of realising that like this industry is, really, really at the heart of Ireland, you know, in every, in every way possible, yeah. Um, Absolutely. And do you think, um, you know, within the industry, are there any qualifications that are becoming more sought after now? Is there any area, for instance, that's seeing a rise in demand? Yeah, well, I think, well, speaking from an ITEC and VTCT perspective here in Ireland, I think we've always seen a, a very strong recognition for new learners um, are people coming back into industry um, from a different uh, industry and doing such things as like it's beauty specialist diplomas but holistic you know massage even sports massage we've seen um, because people are more active so by having people more active you know they do want that you know holistic massage they do want that deep tissue or sports therapy massage uh, we've seen actually nails makeup uh, as well as the hair and barbering saying very very strong within the sector I think is an indicating factor. If we walk down any high street or any back street anywhere in Ireland, what do we see? We see hair, barbering, nail, uh, holistic therapists setting up a sole trader. So I think that in itself is, is saying that the demand is there for these services. So in, in order to supply them, um, we supply them with you know, regulated qualifications through our training institutions, either through ETBs or through the private educational areas. So yeah, we see it as a very stable and growing market, albeit yes, in different sectors. Okay, and do you think, I know that we talked about this briefly ourselves, um, the whole area of you know, the mobile market, um, the freelance market, um, you know, it's in some cases the black market. Yeah. Um, I know that we talked about um, how, you know, you reach those people as well around getting getting the, the health and safety standards up to scratch. Absolutely. Well, I think, yeah, look, there's definitely a spotlight that needs to be shone onto the freelance um, stroke black market, both from an economic driver, but mostly from a safety stance. So we're hoping to reach out to that particular market, the freelance market, to try and educate through CPD or through these particular level two qualifications to upskill them and empower them with these COVID prevention type qualifications that they can either do to either through HABIC or through an ITEC uh, particular college or a VTCT college. So we're trying to reach out to say, look, we all have an act to play here. Um, albeit whether you're in the PAYE market, whether you're freelance, whether you're sole trader, or whether you do, you know, subversive activity, freelance activity, uh, we're kind of reaching out to everybody um, to educate, which effect effectively will keep the public safe. Yeah, I suppose, yeah, it's, it's the number one thing is, is the Absolutely. health of the public, yeah, when it comes down to it. And then um, I suppose my next question, we kind of looked at already about, you know, do you think the industry will get the recognition it deserves now? And will the skills and qualifications required to work in it become more streamlined? Um, as in like, you know, the, the skills that are involved in, in being in the industry, do you think that they're, 
people are now going to realize um, that they're more, you know, advanced than what we would have assumed, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. But I think there was always, you know, there was always that thing that I am just a hairdresser or I am just a therapist. I think now people have realized that they're not just anything, that they have, you know, that they've gone through probably a two year program, you know, whether full time or part time doing a vocational but regulated qualification um, that they should be proud upon. Um, so this industry, I think, has shown that it can be very proud and it can stand on its own two feet. And it is such a driver to the Irish market. So I think, yeah, professionally, we can, we, we can drive through, as I said, becoming one voice, either through joining, you know, associations such as the IMTA or joining such, such as the IR Havoc. Um, I think w once we have a collective voice, we become more stronger and harmonized. But I think then we all then drive standardization through regulated qualification and we insist on standards. So I think if we insist on standards, well, the public will insist on standards uh, to a certain extent as well. So I think we all have a role to play on both educating the public to receive only uh, standardized, we'll say, hair or standardized barbering or standardized massage therapy. Um, and I think that's what we should insist upon. So I think it's, 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 a, it's a collective, but it's also an individual um, collectively as part of being one voice as well. So I think, yeah, um, one voice, I think, should be the way forward uh, to take ourselves more seriously going forward, yeah. And do you think, um, you know, going into the academic year now, if that's, yeah, it is, it'll be coming up in, in September, October, um, do you think there'll be like, a rise in people pursuing careers in the industry or is it too soon to tell? Yeah, I think it is too soon to tell in terms of whether people will be frightened away um, or whether would be people drawn to it because what we've always found typically within the ETBs as in the educational training boards or further education would be people will pursue a two-year uh, career choice to go into becoming you know a beauty technician or a spa, a spa manager, or become a hairdresser, or become a, but also within the private industry, we see people such as, you know, doctors, nurses, uh, solicitors, retraining and becoming vocationally because they have a desire to do, you know, A, B, or C, or they just want to do something else alongside their career because they have such a draw to it. So I don't think numbers will change or people be frightened away. I think in fairness, they should be uh, heightened in terms of and strength because of these new you know infection uh, controls or these new qualifications coming in that'll uh, keep people safer that it's been thought about and it's been delivered upon so yeah I'm, I'm hoping to see a rise because i think in terms of the demand that we talk about um, i think the demand is there so if the demand is there i think we should um, you know insist on having these particular regulated um, and standardized professions yeah, and I suppose the thing to remember now is that the industry was always, um, as you pointed out, you know, very focused on, on sanitization, you know, more so than any other industry. Absolutely. Really, you know? and, and, and now the whole pandemic thing put a spotlight on that and it's made the industry even more regulated. Absolutely. Not, you know, so that's a good thing. Um, okay, then, um, did you want to add anything in yourself that I didn't ask? Um, no, I think I think it's a good um, aspect in terms of shining the light onto the hair and beauty industry in terms of a, how they're coping. And I think we've seen, you know, antidotal evidence that, you know, a lot of hairdressers, a lot of beauticians, a lot of massage therapists are open. They're ready to go again. Um, you know, they're doing very well. But I think going forward now, what they need to do is focus on their retention uh, in terms of giving the confidence to their client to say, you know, I hope you enjoy the experience, albeit it might have been a little bit longer in terms of the experience because of uh, we take you seriously. But then again, it's to, it, to rebook that appointment, you know, for retention of existing clients that I think will then drive um, the market into greater places. So I think it, it has opened, opened really well. Um, and I think it's a good indica indicating factor that, um, you know, that it, there, there is light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah, it's definitely um, opened really well, and I, and um, I know there's like 
we all knew that when it opened that everybody was going to be rushed off their feet. So I think yeah. the next phase that we'll be looking at now is, you know, uh, helping people to, to figure out, you know, how to keep busy. Um, and I, saw, I think I saw a post on, on Facebook the other day where I think it was some salon had put up something about, you know, making sure that you keep communicating with your clients around the new environment because, you know, the salon owners and the staff are, have, have very quickly got used to the new area and space that they're working in, but the client is only coming in every so often. So it's to keep explaining to them like this is the way it is now and make it as comfortable as possible. And I think Absolutely. you said communication. Communication is always key as you're going along, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Brilliant. Okay, like uh, thank you so much for joining us, Niall. You're very welcome. Um, really good to talk to you and get some updates there. And uh, thank you everybody for tuning in. And we are going to be back uh, same time next week, and we'll be chatting to Valerie Finnegan Cattle, who owns Icon Hair Design in Cork. And we will be talking about that that topic that I just touched on there at the end with Niall around the whole, you know, getting back to business because uh, we'll be a few weeks in at that stage and it's kind of like how to maintain, you know, the, the, the flow of business and how to iron out any, obviously there's, there's everybody's going to have a few issues in the, the first couple of weeks, but uh, all about getting back to business, keeping it going and, and looking forward. So thanks everyone again for tuning in and thank you, Niall. You're very welcome. Take care, everybody. Take okay. care. Bye -bye. See you next week, guys. Thank you.